Good afternoon, Beachbody. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Did I scare some of you with this voice? Some of you are thinking, boy, I bet he can sing. <laughs> Hell no. I got a hum, that's about all I got. If there was an American Idol for humming, I'd be in it. I'd be a bad man too, mm -hmm. that's all I got. People harass me about my voice, you all can imagine. My voice changed at age 13. Can you imagine me trick-or-treating at your house? <laughs> People are like, there's a grown man out there trick-or-treating. Like, I'm not a grown man, I'm a child. Not long ago, I was flying through Atlanta. Have any of you all ever flown through Atlanta? All right, we'll have a prayer meeting later. That's a situation right there, boy. You don't want to fly through there. But I was flying through, and I had some extra time, and I thought I'd call my wife and let her know how things were going. Now, you can imagine with this voice, I can't whisper. I've been getting in trouble in church a long time, okay? But I was talking, and these two little ladies were sitting there, one little black lady, one little white lady. They were traveling together. And they pointed, and they were like, I know who he is. And so I thought they'd seen my national championship ring or something, thought I'm important, and I'm not. But as I walked away, you all, I promise this is what I heard. One of the ladies said, I know who he is. He's the man from those insurance commercials. <laughs> For real? I, that is a true story. Now, if it ever happens again, and I know it's going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop and turn and go like this. Are you in good hands? I'm watching you. I'm excited to be with you all. I can't wait to, to talk with you about this money thing because it's a serious thing. A and you know goals. You all are driven and motivated people. But I got to take care of some business first. I started T25 a couple months ago. Sean T made me pull muscles I forgot I had. Is he here? Okay. Because I woke up at 2 a.m. with a Charlie horse the size of a small child. <laughs> You've been there. You know what it's like, limping around. And then I stepped on a Lego, went down like I was shot. But Sean T, that night I cussed him. Y'all have cussed him too. Don't look at me like that. But it's a good kind of cussing, ain't it? Because he handles business. But that night I said, if he was here, I'd whoop him. And then I thought about it. A man that can move that much while talking has some stamina. Probably don't want to fight him. So if he's in here, I was just playing. Don't you come up here on this stage, Shanti. But you know, you guys are used to having goals. You are used to working hard. You are not scared. But here's the deal, I want to tell you this. A dream without a plan is called a wish. And that's truth. And we got to have dreams, but we got to have a plan for those dreams. You all are helping people all around the United States and internationally with their physical goals. T25 has got me believing I can get high school skinny. Right on up in here. All right. Now listen, y'all are coming to my home state of Nashville. We're going, we're going to show y'all a good time when you get there. But my buddy and I, we started talking. He's a former football player, too. And we, started to, we decided to have a weight loss challenge. All right? He was a running back. I was a linebacker. And we decided, all right, you know what? We're going to get serious. We're going to drop weight. So we started doing some stuff. And then I got hooked up on T25. And I've been rolling and doing, and everything's moving good. But he and I decided we were going to make a little wager on this weight loss challenge. So we both put up $500. Now, you know you all, I'm about money, right? I've got three young boys. They're seven, eight, and nine. Pray for us. <laughs> I'm telling you, I think they got a supply of Red Bull or something up in the room. I don't know. But they move a lot, all right? How many of you all have kids? Raise your hand. OK, you know how many, how many have three kids or less? All right, put your hands down. Four or more, six or more. Oh, you fertile. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Those three boys, I'm telling you, I love them to death. Someone told me, they were like, Chris, I'm sure your kids listen to you all the time with that voice. Please. Are you serious? And not long ago, they were at the park, and I was trying to get their attention. And I never get to yell, you all. You can imagine why. But at the park that day, I did like this. I said, boys, every child on the playground stopped. <laughs> they, a little girl had a pacifier. It fell out. And my boys weren't impressed. They were like, that's just daddy. We hear that voice all the time. We are not impressed with that man. But I love those boys. And so the weight loss challenge, why? Because I want to get healthy. I want to be around. My wife knows something happens to me. She's going to be getting a lot of life insurance money to find her second husband. I'll haunt both of them. Put that out there. I'm just playing. So we put that weight loss challenge in. Here's the deal. You know, when you're trying to get serious and make progress, there are some pretenders programs out there not named Beachbody, right? And they suck, right? All right. And so you plug in on something. Why? You got to give the effort. And that's why we can't just sit around on the couch wanting to get healthy. And we can't sit around on the couch wanting to win with money. Now, some of you are making two to five hundred dollars a month in this business because you're starting to grow it and move. Some of you are doing 10 to 15 to 20,000 a month. I don't care where you are in that continuum, but you all are motivated people. So that means you're going to go up. Your income's going to increase. But what's your game plan? Now, they call me the money coach to the stars. I've spent a lot of time in Hollywood, working with entertainers, musicians, pro athletes all over the country. I've seen people do stupid with money like you couldn't believe because they didn't have a plan. Raise your hand if you've ever done something stupid with money. Some of y'all did stupid last night <laughs> playing the blackjack table. And so you look at it and you think, we've all done something stupid, but what's the deal? Well, you got to have a plan. As I just told you, uh, if, if you have a dream without a plan, it's called a wish. So you've got to begin to move forward and plug in regardless of how much you make. Now, some people will tell me, Chris, I, I'll start to plug in once I make more. No, that's not the key. You've got to be able to start to tell money where to go instead of wondering where it went. Now, you look at that, because if you can't manage 20000 a year, what makes you think you're going to manage thirty? You won't. And so you have to start to think different, and that's why I'm here. I want you all to think differently about money moving forward. Because I have my motivation. Those three young boys and my wife are my motivation. I want to make sure that we have a legacy. I want to make sure that I do things as a father that take care of my family. And that's what I want to coach you on today. Now, I know you all are coaches. You help people all the time. You help motivate them. Well, today I'm coaching the coaches. Because at the end of the day, I want you to have something to show for your hard work. Because too many people don't. Now, I'm going to show you a few slides. 64, hold on, let's see if it's 64% of Americans couldn't cover a $1,000 emergency without borrowing money. $1,000. And you look at that, 64%, that's a high percentage. That means if, how many of you are homeowners, raise your hand. Okay, you know it doesn't take long to get to $1,000. A plumbing situation, a roofing situation, all of those things right there will get you right to a thousand pretty quick. This next slide is the one that blew me away. 70% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck and believe that more income is the only solution. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I love money. I've been dealing with money for like 20 years, okay? Contrary to what you think, I'm in my late 30s. Late, late 30s. Oh, hell, I'm lying. I'm in my early 40s. But you look at this and you start to think, what's 70%? That can be a hard thing, right? But here's the deal. Seven out of 10 people are living paycheck to paycheck. And I want to bring it a little bit closer to home for you so you can start to understand this. Think of 10 of your friends. You got 10 of them in your head? Seven out of those 10 friends are living paycheck to paycheck. That means if one check doesn't show up, 
they have a situation. You want to bring it closer to home? Think of 10 of your family members. Seven out of 10 of them, on average, are living paycheck to paycheck. I want to change the game. I want people to start to look at this and realize a few things. That to build wealth, I've got to take some steps. It's just like with T25, you've got to focus. All right? You've got to get serious about it. And that's what I want you all to do with your money. Now, some of you aren't going to listen. Some of you are looking at your phones, playing around, and that's okay. Go to my Facebook page, say my hair looks good. Okay? But for those of you that are serious and you have kids, you have somebody in your family you love enough that you want to be able to do something for. And I tell you this, if I gave all of you $1,000, you can think of somebody that you could bless with that money, couldn't you? Say yes. Invariably, very quickly, everyone knows of somebody that could use that. What I want to do is, is change the game. That it doesn't have to be someday you wish you could help somebody, but actually you get to help yourself your family, and the people you care about just because you plugged into a plan. And here's the deal. I guarantee you all, with the effort you give working Focus T25, the focus you give with P90X, all the focus you give on all of the programs, if you will focus on your money in that manner, I guarantee you will be a millionaire. Now, some of you haven't said, the I saw the program yesterday. Did y'all see the millionaires up on stage say yes? Do you want to be one? Yeah. Is it just going to happen? Say no. no. You got to work. And so we look at this. I'm going to take you on a process to show you exactly what you're going to have to do. Now, I want to show you this. We're going to talk about, hold on, I want to back up one. We're going to take a journey. How many of you have been on vacation before? How many of you have been on vacation with kids? Oh, Lord. That's the situation, isn't it? My wife decided, we're living in Tennessee. By the way, I married way, way up. No, I mean way, way up. If you met my wife, you would say, oh, bless her heart, does she have a seeing problem? Or is he just one hell of a salesperson? Let's go with number two. I closed that deal, I ain't gonna lie. Call it sweetheart. But she decided with those three boys, all under the age of five, that we were gonna drive to Atlantic City. 15 hours with three young kids. Now, as you can imagine, I tried to make all kinds of deals. I'm like, baby, we will transform the backyard into a beach. I will bring in sand, palm trees, I'll do whatever, let's not have to do this. And she goes, no, we could do it, it'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> have you ever been in an argument with your spouse while driving? Yeah, that's not fun. The kids are in the back screaming, that's not fun, 15 hours, we split it up. But to take that journey, we were going to have to have a game plan. Like, we needed to have a process. We just couldn't blink like I Dream of Genie and just pop up in Ocean City. We had to have a plan. The plan is the thing I want to give you today because that's what you have to have to win with money. We wish, we hope all the time for things to just work out with money. And if you don't follow a plan, it's not going to happen, I guarantee you. So if you plug into this, now I'm going to tell you, I guaranteed you the results. This is the same plan I've walked through with millionaires. This is the same plan that I will fly next week to New York to sit down with another millionaire to walk him through. So I'm going to give it to you. I ain't selling it to you, I'm going to give it to you. But I want you to plug in. Can you do that? Say yes. So here's the game plan. You got notes? Hey, you got this on your app. Some of you, y'all, you got little laptops and everything. You on the ball. Did you take a picture of me yet? All right, right on, right on. Behave, I'm married, honey. You quit that. Now listen, on your app, you've got my presentation. So I want you to go to it on the phone, the Coach Summit app, pull it up, and you're going to be able to walk through these plans, this tip. And if you've got family and friends, I want you to share it with them. Because see, as a former banker, I thought it was more sophisticated to win with money making six figures and not having much to show for it. Why? Because I let stuff get in the way of my work. I was hoping things would work out instead of planning for them to. So baby step number one, we're going to walk you through steps. They are baby steps, and the reason why we call that is that we're going to do one thing at a time. The problem is, in this day and age, we got so many things buzzing, ringing, and dinging, we can't focus. We are an ADD culture. Squirrel. We can't focus. 
I saw a man the other day driving to work. He was eating a bowl of cereal while shaving. I quickly got over away from him because he's an accident about to happen. Why? He ain't focusing on the road. So step one, baby step one, we're going to walk you through these one at a time. Don't try to do nine things at once. You're going to be ineffective in most of them. So the first thing you want to do is get a $1,000 emergency fund. Now, I tell you this because as you get this $1,000, what's going to happen is, is life, when it comes up, you're going to have a game plan to deal with it. You're not going to be surprised. Like, watch this. How many of you have had an automobile-related emergency in the last year? Raise your hand. Look around the room. Put your hands down. You look at that and you think, yeah, life is going to happen. But if you're not prepared, then what happens is we end up reaching for credit cards and things. And those things aren't your friend. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. So what I want you to do is get $1,000 saved up, and I want you to put it in a money market type of account. Now, a money market is something that your bank, every bank can do a money market account. What it is is it's going to give you a better rate of return than a simple savings account. Savings accounts are terrible. I mean, they're just their, their interest. You're not going to earn much. But a money market is going to give you a better rate of return, and your money is going to be safe. We're not investing this money. This is money that's going to sit there. So if we have an emergency, a flat tire, needing a battery, whatever it is, you have money now to go do it. 80% of Americans don't have money just sitting. As a culture, we spend $1.26 for every $1 we earn. Now, I'm not a mathematician, but that ain't a good thing. So if you have this money saved up, you're going to be able to breathe a little bit easier. You're going to relax. Now, people say, well, Chris, how do I get this $1,000? Well, I'm going to tell you, the first thing is by working. The second thing is sell some stuff. We got stuff. Did you all know that storage units didn't come around until like the 70s? We got so much stuff that they, it, it's, it's too much for our house, so we got to go rent space to put stuff that we go visit. And so you think about that and you go, I got some stuff around the house that I could sell. And you start to look in your attic. Like me, I had three sets of golf clubs. By the way, I suck at golf. No, I look good, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. I got my little hat, shoes, right? I look like I know what I'm doing until I swing. And the ball goes 300 yards, I just don't know where it went. Okay, that's a problem. So I thought, you know what, if I sold two sets of those golf clubs, that could be money we could use for our emergency fund when we started getting serious about it. So my tip to you is when you go home, I want you to find stuff to sell. Now, hear me, wives especially, don't go back selling your husband's stuff. My wife was home making a list of my stuff. I'm like, no, you're supposed to make your own list. And we did, and we had a yard sale. How many of y'all have ever had a yard sale, by the way? Okay, there's some interesting folks that go to yard sales. A man showed up at my house at 6 a.m. Yard sale didn't start until 8. I went to him at the front door. He goes, sir, I'm here for the garage. I said, well, it's not time. And he pulled out money. He said, well, I have money. I said, let me go open the garage. <laughs> oh, we started that sale early. And I made $125. And so you start to think about that. It can be a game changer because you relax a little bit because you know if something pops up, I can take care of business. Now, I want you to hear me. The pizza man showing up at the front door is not an emergency, okay? The sale going on with shoes is not an emergency. So what you want to do, how many of you are married? Okay, here's what I want you to do. How many of you are happily married? Oh, if you are here with your spouse and your hand ain't up, <laughs> you're going to have a problem when we get ready to leave out of here. But if you're married, what I want you to do, let me, I'm going to tell you another stat. Money fights are the number one cause of divorce. Money fights. And so I want to thank Jeff and Sandy for bringing me here because this money stuff runs deep, you all. And you all are knocking it out of the park. You're rocking it, but I want you to have a game plan. So husbands and wives, what I want you to do is make sure you're on the same page. Make sure you're working together and you're in agreement on stuff financially. Don't use money as a weapon. And I don't want you to use it as a control mechanism. You're a team. So you sit down and talk. Now here's the problem. 
most of us have not been raised with how to deal with money. No one ever told us. So we have to feel around in the dark for the light switch, and, and, and then we make a lot of errors. So I, I want you to talk about it together. The best way to start to deal with money together is to have a dream meeting, first and foremost. I want you all to sit down and dream about what are some things you want to do, where are some places you want to go, who are some people you'd like to bless. And what happens is, is when you put down your weapons, you start to realize that we're a team. Like if we're both in the boat and rowing in the same direction, we're going to get there a lot faster. But what we have going on is we have husbands and wives sitting in the boat rowing in different directions, and you know what happens? You go nowhere. There's a lot of energy expended, but you're going nowhere. So I want you to be in agreement. How many of you are single? You ain't got to put your hand up all happy and fast like that. <laughs> They're like, we do what we want, where we want, how we want to, Chris. I know, and that's good. I want you to be able to have some freedom. But I want you, if you are single or newly single, I want you to get an accountability partner. I want you to get with somebody that, that wants you to win financially. I don't mean your shopping buddy, because y'all be up in the mall doing stupid together. Okay? So find somebody that's serious and committed to helping you win. And now you begin to talk with people about stuff. Now, I want you to hear me. I don't care where you are financially. Better is available. People always tell me, Chris, I'm doing okay. We're doing all right. I don't think all right is the destination. You know, if you were coaching somebody and they were doing T25 and you asked them, hey, are you doing your workouts every day? And they were like, ah, we're doing them here and there. That's not going to lead to success. So with money, I want you to make sure you've got an all-around game plan, something that you focus on. And here's, I, I want to show you something. I figured out something a long time ago that money will behave. Watch this. See, money can only go where we let it go. Watch. Watch this. Stay. Come with me. See, some of y'all are leaving your money in the mall. Money will go. Money will behave like you wish your kids would. So you think about that. It will. It can only go where we let it. So if we take it out and we go in and we spend it on stuff and we don't have a game plan, we just turned our money into their money because you end up leaving it with them. I want you to look at it. Don't have it be this thing that, oh, I don't know how it works. I know how it works. You work hard, you earn it. When you get it, you got to tell it where to go. You got to tell it to go toward that, that bill. You got to tell it to go toward your mortgage. You got to tell it to go to your savings. You got to tell it to go to your investments. If you don't tell it, it won't go. So start to think different. Now, this next step, once you get the $1,000, you're going to let it sit. We ain't messing with it. Okay, because it's only for emergencies, and you and your husband or spouse are going to talk about that. But now, once you have that, you're going to go to the second phase. So look at your app. You can see the next one, or I'm going to have it up here on the screen. The next one is, we're going to pay off all the debt using the debt snowball. Now, you go, wait a minute, Chris, what are you talking about, debt? What I'm talking about is all debt except for your home. So that's credit cards, car loans, all of that. Remember, I'm walking you through a plan. I didn't say it was going to be easy. I said it's going to be way beneficial when you focus. So what I want you to do is get a sheet of paper and write down all your debts. I want you to write down the credit card you got, if you have a student loan, if you borrowed money from your parents, whatever it is, lay it out there. Now, if you're not sure of what you owe on student loans, you've probably been getting a bill and haven't opened it. But you can also get a copy of your credit report. Now, hear me with this, and if you're taking notes, jot this down. There are three credit repositories out there, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. What I want you to do is get a tri-merge copy. I want you to get a copy of all three of your credit reports. If you're married, I want you and your spouse to get theirs. Sit down together and look at those and see what do we owe? Where do we stand right now? Because see, we're going to start to eliminate that. Now, I found a visual of what credit cards represent and what debt represents. Anybody see these? Anybody get arrested last night? Handcuffs. 
I want you to start to look at debt as handcuffs. Because see, what it does is it keeps you from doing the things you'd really want to do. It keeps you from doing stuff. And here was the best image I ever saw. When my first son was born, Tyson, who's now nine, I thought debt is keeping me from doing the things that I want to do for my family. Now I put that Visa and that American Express card up ahead of my family. So I'm going to stop. Now some of you are looking at me like, Chris, you don't understand. I get, I get miles for my credit cards. Mm. That's not something you want to get wrapped up in. Because I'm going to tell you this. I have met with many millionaires. None of them have told me that airline miles and credit card points are the thing that put them over the top. None of them have told me, you know what, them, my, them points I got from Discover, that cash back, that was the thing that put me over the million dollar hurdle. None of them. And we have to shake up our thinking. Like my boys even know, like the Capital One commercials, any of y'all have ever seen those? They're cute, right? What's in your wallet? Cash. I have cash in my wallet. Why? Because I know how credit cards work. They charge you a penalty. They charge you interest for using their money. High amounts of interest. And so you start to look at that and you go, yeah, wait a minute. If it was a real friend of mine, it wouldn't penalize me. And so I'm going to give you a PhD in economics right here. If you're taking notes, write this down. Interest that you earn is a reward. Your savings accounts, your investments, if you're earning interest, you're being rewarded. Interest that you pay is a penalty. You start to think about that. So if I'm paying interest, I'm being penalized for using someone else's money. So you don't want to be penalized. You want to make sure that, hey, am I doing the things I need to do for my own family? And so I want you to make a list of it. Now, the debt snowball, what is it? The debt snowball is how you're going to attack the debt. Once we've got it listed out and we know what we're dealing with, now we're going to walk through and systematically knock them off one by one. So we're going to start with the little bitty one first. So if you've got a little $500 Home Depot or a $500 Visa, we're going to attack that one first while making minimum payments on the other debts. And once that little one's gone, we're going to take that payment and add it to the second debt. And now you see, it's just like a snowball that rolls downhill. As it rolls, it's picking up more and more snow and it's getting bigger and bigger. So as you do that, what's going to happen is you're going to realize that, my gosh, we're making more and more progress. Now, student loans, okay, it's a big deal these days. $1.2 trillion worth of debt we have. It's over, over past credit card debt, which we have at $800 million in this country. If you have student loans, it's going to take a little bit longer for those to be able to knock those out. But what we don't want to do is turn a blind eye to it. I had one client that I worked with. They had $300,000 in student loans to come out to make a, a salary of 50000 as a social worker. They had got their bachelor's, master's, and PhD to be a social worker. Okay? Now, there's nothing wrong with that career choice. What I'm saying is I want people to look at money a little bit differently. We don't know how money works. We don't understand. We don't get it. And so I want you to see interest for what it is. Now, if you have credit card debt, I don't want you to feel bad. What I want you to do is get focused. Say focus. That's what I want you to do. Because here's the deal. When that money stops having to go out to that credit card, guess where it gets to stay? With you. When it stops. And that's what debt does. Debt makes our income out gone. So what we want to do is, yeah, we're already working hard for this money. How do we get a chance to keep more of it with us? Now, I don't care how much you're making. If you're doing this and you're making two grand a month or $200 a month or $20,000 a month, you've got to have a plan. You have to. And so as you look at this, you'll start to attack debt. And so what I want you to do, and some people say, oh, Chris, so what do we do if we have credit cards? I'm going to show you. I want you to, once you pay them off, call them and close them and cut them up. Because here's what you're saying when you do that. My money is staying with me. I'm no longer going to do that. And that's exactly what I did. My kids matter to me more than this piece of plastic. I don't want to belong to the debt country club anymore. My three boys have the right. And so I looked at it now. You can also look at some stuff to sell to get out of debt. I had a motorcycle. I'll tell you all this quick story. We, we, I had been saving up. I got a motorcycle. My wife said, honey, you can get one, but promise me this, that you'll sell it when we have a baby. 
I didn't hear that part. I was like, yeah, okay, honey, whatever. And I'll go, because, you know, the motorcycle, I love riding it, because my, my, hair, my hair can blow in the wind. Quit that. And so she said, promise me. So we found out six months, about a, a year and six months later, we were having a baby. And she goes, so are you going to sell the motorcycle? I said, huh? Have you ever done that to your spouse? Huh? Like it's going to make it go away, right? Huh? So we, I sold it. I knocked off two credit cards, an American Express and a Discover. Took back territory. Now that was $400 that wasn't going to leave me each and every month. I had just given my family a raise. See, we get so used to making payments, we don't really realize, hey, wait a minute, I've got a lot of money going out to these people. What could we do with this if it wasn't leaving us? And so you start to look at it. Another way you can give yourself a raise that I don't have on here, but it's also get on a budget. Okay? So type that in there, budget. Now, some of you, as soon as you hear that word, you break out into hives. You're like, oh, he just said the B word. And if you don't like the word budget, here's the deal. Then I want you to get on a cash flow plan. See, all we're going to do, we're, we're going to demystify this stuff because we think it's a lot harder than it is. We're going to start to tell money where to go instead of wondering where it went. So I want you to sit down. You don't need to buy any kind of sophisticated software. You, don't, you, can, you, can, go to, 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 you can get basic formulas, basic forms. You can go to DaveRamsey.com. That's the guy I'm partnered with and working with. You can get some free budget uh, paperwork and, and a file to plug in. You just need to know, what does it take to run our household? How much is our mortgage? How much is our rent? How much are our utilities? Those basic things. Now, groceries are dangerous. And some of you all eat healthy, all of you, right? Eating healthy is more expensive, isn't it? Say yes. yes. Right. Do you all have whole foods out here? Yes. Okay, or as I call it, whole paycheck. I'm going to tell you this story. My wife decided that the boys were going to, we were going to start drinking organic milk. Uh, as a family, we go through like two, three gallons in a week, okay? My boys got strong bones, I guess. I don't know. But we went to Whole Foods, my oldest son and I, and I was talking on the phone to my wife. I said, yeah, baby, we're going to pick it up. We got it. And my son said, whoa, daddy. I was like, what is, what's the problem? He said, this is expensive milk. I said, what? What do you mean? I looked at it. It was almost $7 a gallon. I told him, I said, boy, put that milk down carefully. <laughs> Step away from the liquid gold. We ain't drinking that stuff, I'm going to tell you right now. Because I can't pay $7 a gallon, you know that. I will buy a cow first. <laughs> the Hogan boys will get milk direct. Put your lip on there, boy, you're good. Go on. Hey, <laughs> daddy's on a budget. But you know what I'm saying, but hey, groceries are dangerous. If you're gonna eat healthy, we gotta look at it and say, okay, if I'm gonna eat healthy, then I realize I've gotta cut back in some other areas. The other thing I want you to stay away from are these big, big shopping stores, grocery stores like Sam's and Costco's. You all seen those? Okay, you know the ones with a cart so big you need a CDL license to drive it. <laughs> CDL's a commercial semi-truck license, y'all. And you know, you got to be careful in there because you know there's a problem if you can go down aisle one and get eggs, but pick up a couch on aisle two. That's not right. So you got to be careful. And you know, you go in there hungry and you buy that thousand pack of egg rolls because they tasted good while you were there. And you come home and then the dog won't even eat the daggone thing. Why? Because you know, and we did stupid too. I'm going to be honest with you all. My wife, we were in the store, she texted me. She bought a jar of Jif the size of that podium. I, I'd never seen anything like it. She called me. She said, honey, come over here and help me get this in the cart. I said, get what in the cart? My wife is strong. She does uh, uh, Taekwondo. She's an athlete. I'm like, you mean help you? What? So I come, you all, and I come around the corner down the aisle where my wife was. I thought it was a display. I, she was like, put it, help me get it in the cart. I go, honey, that's too much peanut butter. And then you, her voice got deep. She was like, put it in the cart. <laughs> and then my voice got high. Yes, dear. <laughs> I was scared. She got mad. We put it in the cart. You should have seen me trying to get it home. I needed some straps or something, all right? But it was on sale, and we thought it was a good buy. And the kids, bless their hearts, they're so tired of peanut butter. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> I ain't lying. The boys, <laughs> there was an unintended benefit from this peanut butter. I didn't realize this. Because it, it was so big, like you couldn't put it in a cabinet. 
So we just set it up on top of the refrigerator. And the boys were like, Daddy, we want a snack. Because they eat everything. I was like, we got peanut butter. I was like, oh. So I went out and bought this 1,000 pack of spoons. And I'm like, go in there and get you a scoop. And so they would go get a scoop, and then their little tongue would get stuck to the roof of their mouth. And then it was quiet in my house for a little while. I was like, I love me some peanut butter. I ain't gonna lie. And the boys, they knew, because look, mom and dad got serious. When we started working together, we started doing stuff that mattered. And you start to get on the same page, and what happens is you look at stuff different. You know what we did? We realized we were spending almost $1,300 a month on groceries. And my wife said, honey, how long could we go without having to buy stuff? And I go, what do you mean? She goes, you, we got stuff in cabinets, corn, that can of lima beans that's moved with you three times, the poor little labels just hanging on, you know the one. And we pulled everything out of our cupboards, we pulled everything out of the freezer, and we realized we had enough food there that we could probably go a long time without having to buy groceries. Now, I'm telling you this because this is another way to save you money. So if you're spending 800 to 1,000 a month or whatever it is on groceries, if you can eat what you've got in there, you can start up and get almost to your emergency fund of $1,000. So we had to buy eggs and milk. Don't get me wrong, we bought those things. And we had some interesting meals. When you put peas and ramen noodles mixed with a little ground beef, that's interesting, I ain't gonna lie. But we did that because we realized, you know what? That money's not going to leave us now this month. And we looked at things different. And eating out is the number one zapper of someone's budget. So here's what I want you to do. I coached a guy last month. He told me he was spending $4,200 a month eating out. I told him you could have bought a chef, hired a chef for less than that. He had no idea. See, so some of you are out there like, ooh, that's terrible. You're spending too. So how do you control it? Well, here's the thing. I want you to get an envelope, just a white envelope, and I want you to put an amount of money in there per pay period, and that's what you're going to use to eat out on. You're going to look at your budget and say, okay, hey, here's what we're going to do. We're going to spend X amount, 300 every two weeks, for eating out. And when you go eat out, I want you to pull the money out of that envelope. And guess what? When that envelope is empty, you stop. You can't eat out anymore until you get paid again. I'm trying to help you put holes, plug some holes in your budget. And we used to eat out on Sundays after church all the time. And our boys knew. They'd say, Daddy, are we going to eat out? And we'd go, well, we got to look at the envelope. And so when it was empty, i said, guys, hey, envelope's empty. They know that. They know what it means. And I heard my middle child, who's wired like me, and he sat back and he went like this. Yes, we're eating more peanut butter then. <laughs> I did like this, you sure are. And the jar, you all, we've had it for two years, it ain't moved. It's like down here. Now, I tell you those things because when you're looking to budget, it's not, it's not a difficult thing, it takes effort. So I want you to sit down. Now I'm gonna tell you this, it's gonna take two to three months for you to get a budget just right. See, the first time, husbands and wives, I can guarantee you the first one's gonna end in a fight. Why, because you ain't never talked about it before. Everybody's nerves are on end. Guys, we use money as this, as this to, to measure our value. Ladies, you look at money as security. And so if there's not enough money, the guy's ego is hurt. And if there's not enough money, the lady is scared. Well, let's get this right. His ego's hurt and she's scared. Oh, that's a love brew right there, isn't it? You can just strike a match and throw it in there on that. It's gonna come bust. So here's what you do. You sit down and say, all right, we're just going to, Chris, you say, listen, the bald man told us it's going to take us two to three months. We're going to have to take time with this. We're not going to get frustrated. We're going to walk through this. But as you do it, you're going to gain more and more confidence. And I'm going to tell you this. When we got plugged in on budgeting, we saved ourselves $700 a month. Just because we started to tell money where to go instead of just going all over the place. So when you control your money, there's benefits to it. You don't always have to earn more. You just got to manage what you got. So attack debt like the plague. The next step, once you've done that, then we're going to move to baby step number three. Now, you look at this, baby step number three is where we're going we're gonna to save up three to six months of expenses. We're going to make sure that we've got all the things that we need to be able to take care of business. 
And you can do this now because you don't have debt. And so you've already attacked all the debt for except for your house, your cars, all that in baby step two, your credit cards, bank loans. You've paid off everything but the house. And that could take you 18 to 24 months. It depends on how intense you are and how much debt you have. And so you look at that, but once you do that, now you can stockpile some money. We had the starter emergency fund of $1,000, but now we're gonna put three to six months of expenses aside. Why? Because what it's gonna do is, you now have some protection against life happening. If there's a job loss, if there's an illness, whatever it is, but you're gonna have six months of living expenses sitting in that money market account. And as you have that, you're gonna breathe easier. You're going to know that, hey, you know what, I, I, I've, got some, I've got time, I've got some money, I, I can be able to take care of some stuff. And so I want you to start to think about that and look at it and say, okay, here's what I need to do. I get those three to six months of expenses put away, I'm not touching it unless there's an emergency. And here's what I found, when you have money put away, you sleep easier. Because an emergency fund makes an, a, a simple inconvenience out of emergencies. And so you're going to let that sit there. We're going to treat it just like the first emergency fund. We're not touching it. And so now that's going to build up. Now, people say, well, Chris, why are you saying three to six months expenses? Because it's going to depend on your preference. Some people like having six. Others want three. It's up to you. So you begin to look at that. Again, if you're married, talk about it with your spouse. If you're single or newly single, I want you to talk about it with your accountability partner. But that money sitting there is going to give you a breath of fresh air when life happens. And a lot of people, I mean, imagine, if you had six months of your living expenses put away, how would you feel? How would you be able to focus on your job? You're going to feel a little bit different. Why? Because you are focused. Now, once you do baby steps one, two, and three, now you're going to get to baby step number four. Look in your presentation. Mike, we doing all right on time? Okay. So I'm going to walk through these really quick. Now, this is where we're going to start to invest. Everybody's always talking about retirement. We want to invest. We want to start to put money away. This is where we're going to do this. Now, I want you to hear me. Retirement, I'm going to tell you something. Retirement is not an age. Retirement is a financial number. So when you can get to your financial number, you can retire. So you've got to start to realize, what's it going to take for us to retire on? Well, it's going to be a little bit easier to start to invest and do stuff now that you've taken back your income from the credit card places. So now you start to invest. Now, I'm going to ask you this. How many of you drive the speed limit all the time? Raise your hand. There ain't a hand up in here. Really, raise your hand. Seriously, if you drive the speed limit. One, two, three, four. Okay. How many of you go five miles over the speed limit? All right, a few. How many go 10 miles over the speed limit? Okay. Y'all got some heavy feet. How many of you go, I don't want to know how many miles over the speed limit? Y'all getting ready to get a ticket. I ask you that because it's all about our risk tolerance. How much risk are we willing to take? You see, the people that always drive the speed limit, they're not willing to take a lot of risk. The people that go five miles over, we all know the rule. They tell you if you're five miles, they're probably not going to get a ticket. Ten miles over, you open up the risk. But I don't want to know how many miles over, you really open up risk to get a ticket. Well, with investing, I want you to make sure that you're taking the right kind of risk based on you, your lifestyle, how close you are to retiring. And so I want you to do this for me. I want you to plug in, I want you to find an investment professional that has the heart of a teacher. Not your broke uncle, not your friend that doesn't know what they're doing. I want you to find somebody that's not trying to sell you stuff but literally wants to help you. That's what the heart of a teacher means. So I want you to find that person. I want you to sit down with your spouse if you're married and begin to talk that stuff through and know what you've got to do to hit your number. As you do that, you're going to be better prepared. Again, husbands and wives working on it together. Now, I got something I need to back up and tell you that I want to make sure you get. If you're sitting in here and you don't have a will, I want you to get a will by next week. You have to have a will. You have to, especially if you have kids. If you don't have a will, I don't know about you, but see, Tennessee, we struggle to keep some potholes paved. And if I don't have a will, my kids are going to be turned over to the state. If we can't take care of a road, they're not going to take care of my babies. And the same for you and where you live, so you've got to have a will. You can go to uslegalforms.com and get a will. 
You can go to legal Zoom and get a will. You've got things that you can do. The second thing I want you to do, hold on, honey, is get life insurance. I want you to get a term life insurance policy on you and your spouse. So you got to have it on both of you. We tell people to get 10 to 12 times your annual income in term coverage. So if you make 50,000 a year, you want to get 500,000 in term coverage. It's like 40 or 50 dollars a month, as healthy as you all are. It's very cheap. But what insurance does is it's income replacement. God forbid something happens to you, you know exactly how much money is going to come to your family. And if you've got a spouse that's working inside the home, you need to make sure you get coverage on them as well. It's very, very important. And so as you start to do this investing, we tell people 15%. So husbands and wives, if you're doing 7.5% each outside of your jobs or with your jobs, but that's the number you want to be at. Now, all the other steps we did one at a time. But when we hit baby step four and we're starting to invest 15%, we're going to start to do some other stuff at the same time. This is the first time we've done multiple things because we've wrestled away our debt in baby step number two. We've got an emergency fund in baby step number three. Now we're going to start to invest. Next, what you're going to do is start saving up for college for your kids. This is baby step number five. So we're going to begin to put money aside for, for college. Now, you can talk with your investment professional. They can tell you about educational savings accounts, also known as an ESA. Okay, there are things that you can do there. They can walk you through your options, but now you start to put money away while they're young. That money's going to grow. And now you're going to have an availability when the kid gets old enough to go to school, you'll be able to have money for it. Now, some of you are sitting out there and you've got kids in high school. Or maybe some of you have kids in college. You say, Chris, what can we do? I really want to encourage you to start to be proactive in looking for scholarships. Really talk to the guidance counselor. Talk to the people at school and find out. Scholarships are available. We just have to get focused on seeking them out and really, really applying for them and being proactive. Now, once you're doing baby step five, you're also going to click down, look at number six. Now that we've got all the debt kind of taken care of, now we're going to begin to attack our home debt. Now we're going to not try to just, because the goal is not to just buy a home. The goal is to own that bad boy free and clear. And some of you, you know, with the total financial freedom, you've got people that are winning and doing that in here. But I'm going to tell you this, if, you're, if you've got $1,000 a month going out on your mortgage, what could you do if that 1000 wasn't leaving you every month? Think of how much progress you could make toward retirement. Think of how much progress you could make toward saving up for college because that mortgage payment isn't leaving you every month. And I want to encourage people to start to think a little bit different on this. And so attack that. Don't listen to any accountant that says, hold on to your mortgage for the tax deduction. No, that's stupid. Pay that bad boy off and get that payment out of your life. So you don't have to be bothered with that. And then once you do this, you do the best thing you can ever do with money on baby step number seven, that's build wealth and give. And I tell you this because as you start to do it, you're going to be able to be a blessing to people. You're going to be able to do stuff. And I want, you to, I want to ask you this question. What could you do if you didn't owe anybody anything? You could do whatever you wanted to do. You can take those vacations you've dreamed about. Why? Because you can pay cash. When someone in your neighborhood or in your family has a need, you can write a check. You don't have to. And so I walk you through this process because it's an amazing thing when you get that kind of freedom. You get free. You can do whatever you want when you want. And so I want to encourage you, don't get caught up in the traps of today that tell you you need to have the latest, greatest thing. If you've got a car that runs, drive it. They're going to come out with a new model every year. Don't get caught up in that payment. Don't do that. You start to look at stuff a little bit different. And I tell you this, the, the biggest thing you could do as we get ready to wrap up here, as you work through this plan step by step, I'm going to tell you this, it works. We tell millions of people plug in. And young people in here, I want you to focus. Don't you give up. I want you to stay committed. I don't care if you're making 1000 a month or whatever it is. Manage that to the best of your ability. And when you do, things change. And I'm going to tell you this. There's one more thing you have to do today. I've walked you through the plan. You've got to do the most important part right now. And when you leave out of here, and that is you have to decide. You have to make a decision that as husband and wife, we're going to work together. 
We're not going to get caught up in what the world tells me I need to have. I'm going to stay focused on, on a plan. I'm going to stay focused on building a legacy. And when you decide to be different with your money, and you decide to never get confused the difference between a want and a need, and we do that a lot, we get confused. When you don't get confused anymore, you'll start to make progress. And I'm going to tell you, I started off telling you this. A dream without a plan is called a wish. A dream with a plan and a target is called a goal. So I'm going to ask you, do you think you can do this? Say yes. yes. Are you going to do it? Say yes. yes. I want you to get serious about this. There's no book you need to buy. There's nothing else you need to do but plug in and follow these seven baby steps. And I guarantee you, you will win. The difference is for your kids' kids. And for me, that's my vision. When I'm old and my kids are able to come up and talk to me, and my great-great-grandkids say, you know what? Our grandfather cared about us. Our dad cared about us. And he cared enough to try. And that's all I want you to do is to try. Can you do it? Say yes. yes. Thank you all and have a great day.